What if you can have this button do a bunch of different things? What if by manipulating this switch you could change what this momentary switch does? Greetings. I want to do a video that can solve an issue with specifically this controller. Okay, this is the the X7 Tyrannus. So you only have one switch here, which is a momentary. And if you're using the, something like the Split 2 um, and it, to control it in here, um, the issue you're going to have is that the Split to at least for me, and I don't know if maybe I'm the only one having this issue, it it only works with momentary buttons. So if you were to switch a button, put it on a switch like this, like KISS, where you flip it on, it's on, and you flip it off, and it's off. It doesn't work that way. You have to like click it on and off real fast. And that that doesn't really work really well. So right now we're connected to one of my quadcopters here. And uh, I'm going to show you. So if I, uh, you'll actually hear the split kick on. So you see that's the split recording. And that's the split not recording. Now, you could take your Tyrannus and put it on a switch here and just click it real fast if you want to go into Wi-Fi mode. Why do you want to go into Wi-Fi mode? Well, if you want to connect it to your phone and ch check your settings and look at your videos without using the USB with the little Wi-Fi adapter, you, got, you have to get in into, into uh, Wi-Fi mode. And I found that when it's connected to the UARTs, those buttons on the side of, of the... Um, the split two board don't do anything so basically what I want to show you is how to do this so if you watch right here and it's gonna be hard because I know that the, the lighting isn't great um, but if I hit if with this switch all the way up split on split off look at that that would be Wi-Fi and this would be mode select so what you're seeing here is this switch the functionality or the output of this switch controlled by this switch. So if you look here on the screen, okay, hit this switch once. One more time. So technically, you can put as many functions on this one momentary switch as you want with a single switch. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this in OpenTX for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a lot easier to set this up in Open T, um, OpenTX Companion and load it onto the radio. Two, um, it's easier to show it to you. And three, the whole lighting situation right now because it's nighttime and I don't have a whole lot of light in here. This is just easier overall and, and more visual. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you step by step how to set this up. And then I'm going to explain how it works. So I'm sure that some people will just want to set it up and get going and they don't want to hear a lot of talking about how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and show you first. And I'm going to give you um, an, a simple explanation so you can understand what it's doing. And then I'll go into more detail. My, my thought process on that is for the people who can totally understand what I'm doing real quick, they're going to know right away and they're going to be able to set it up and not have to sit there for a lot more information. And then you have the people who aren't so savvy, but they're pretty good. And once you explain it in simple terms, they're good to go and they can do it. And then you have individuals who need a lot of instruction. And that's where 
or or also the other individual who want to know what it's how it's working totally they can stick around for the whole video at any rate i thank you for watching the video and i hope you like and subscribe and give me some comments and some love some hate some thumbs up some thumbs down whatever you want to do because you know what it's a free country and uh it's cool so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to make a new model and you can do this on an existing model um, but i'm doing a new model for simplicity and before i start um, let me just explain that on the radio, the three position switch that I was using was the SA switch. And the momentary switch is the SH switch. You can do this on any radio with any momentary and any three position switch you want. In this scenario, it's my X7 and it was the SA switch and the SH switch. So that's how we're gonna to, to go about this. So I'm gonna make a new model for simplicity and I really don't care about these settings. Um, we just need a clean slate. You're either making a new model or you're going to edit your old model, model you double click on it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some logical switches. So you're gonna go in here, you're gonna make, uh, the, you're gonna go to the first one or first available and make an and. So actually you can go ahead and make three of these the function and because you're gonna have three um, different positions on the switch to control three different actions of that momentary switch. You're gonna go down to the first one. You're gonna make the first logical switch SA back, the second logical switch SA center, and the third logical switch SA forward. Under version, uh, under the V2, you're just going to make them all SH forward. Okay, now that's it. That's all set for this. We're going to go over to mixes. We're going to go to the first available mix. And we're going to double click it and you're going to make the very first one, the first logical switch that you made, which was L01. Click enter or Okay, sorry. You're going to go over here and you're going to do the same thing but with the next logical switch, L02. Okay. And then the very third logical switch that you made, we're going to go down, which was L03. And we're going to click OK. Now you're pretty much set up in here now to do three different positions, three different functions on a single um, momentary switch. Now the real simple explanation is that um, each one of these channels is an auxiliary channel in your firmware. If it's beta flight, we can click over to beta flight, flight real quick. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of auxiliary channels. So um, auxiliary one is the very first channel after the default controls, your stick controls. So that would be channel five. And then every auxiliary after that is, you know, auxiliary two is six, auxiliary three is eight, auxiliary four is, uh, I'm sorry, seven, auxiliary four is eight, auxiliary five is nine, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So when we're in OpenTX and we do this, the way this works is with the end function, this logical switch, which is like, a software switch is turned is a positive value and basically on full blast if the SA button is forward and the SH button is down so basically that means if you do both of those switches at the same time it's going to turn on L01 so when you have the SA switch all the way forward and it's there when you hit that button it activates SH or I'm sorry activates uh, when you hit SH button forward, it activates L1, L01. When you flip that switch to the center, anytime you hit the SH forward button, because SA is in center and SH is forward, it activates L L02. And the same thing, SA all the way forward, and you hit the SH button, because they're both activated, it turns on L03. Uh, and then basically you have L01, L02, and L03 on channel five, six, and seven. 
So they will turn on when you have that selector switch in one of those positions and hit that, um, that SH button. So for those of you who get what I'm saying already, um, I've got an idea that you're a little excited and you're probably getting ready to jump out of this video and go ahead and, and set this up and go for it. But do me a favor, leave me a comment and a like, please. Um, or, you know, some love, some hate, some like, some dislike, whatever you want. Uh, and I appreciate you for stopping by watching the video. For the rest of you that want a little bit more information, um, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit deeper into this um, and talk a little bit. And I'm going to try not to make it crazy ununderstandable. Um, so basically what we can do here is if I get out of here, and we'll, if I click on the model here from the beginning um, of the video, this is the one that is is set up in that video so if you see here I have the three logical switches after a different logical switch here set up exactly the same way if we go into mixers because I have all my other switches set up like my arm switch which is SF a couple other switches some mode selectors and whatnot um, you'll notice that the the channel 8 and the channel 10 are deleted and that's because they used to be the SA and the SH switch so I added, I deleted those and I added those three. So if you're going to use a switch that you already have assigned to something, you need to delete those assignments. Otherwise, you're going to have a conflict um, and something's not going to work right. Or you're going to do two things on the one switch. Um, so that's all set up there. Um, what I can do is show you by clicking into um, Betaflight and I'll show you how to go ahead and set the three buttons up. So I have to power up my quad and power on my radio for this to work. And, and what we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and this is, uh, this is the run cam sw split buttons. So once you have those three buttons set up, it's the same thing with, with any um, beta flight setup. So your camera power button in beta flight starts and stops the video. So you're going to hit add a range, put your SF button in the position you want it when you want that button to record it. And, and I'm going to go ahead and click it now and you'll see that it assigned auxiliary 7 and it hits just above 2000. And then you need to go ahead and drag this all the way over so that it actually turns on the camera power when you hit that button. I'm going to switch it to the center, and you really can't see me do that, but I'm, I switch it to the center position, and I'm hitting that uh, momentary switch again, and it's not doing anything. I'm going to switch it back, and now it is. So now let's set up the Wi-Fi button, and I like my, my second position to be the Wi-Fi button. Um, and this turns it into Wi-Fi mode, so you're going to hit add a range, buttons in the center switch, and now we've assigned it. And again, we have to move this over so that it, it's in that range. I don't know if you can hear it clicking in the recording, but that's back up to the top position. Now I'm going to hold the momentary button and switch the selector switch. You see that it's jumping between them. Um, we have one more button to do, and that is the camera change mode. And this will allow you to set settings in the... Uh, the OSD for the split, um, which is actually con very convenient. So again, we're going to select our setting on our three position switch, which is for me is all the way forward. And we're, we hit add range and now we've assigned, assigned it to the camera change button. I'm going to move the range over. Boom. We're all set. I'm going to save that. So now all the way up on the SA, middle on the SA, all the way forward on the SA. And we're pretty much all set up. Basically, what you're doing is you're not assigning a physical switch to a channel. You're assigning a software switch to the channel. And you have three of them. Whenever these two conditions are met, it turns that switch on. It's as simple as that. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope this is helping some people. Um, and again, if it is, let me know in the comments. Um, love, hate. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want. And uh, thanks for watching.